Hello everyone, this is Josh Oaks from Media Leaders and I'm excited in this video to work on a company analysis with my friend Blake Jameson on his company called Twitter for Actors. Blake, welcome to the video. Hey, thanks for having me, Josh. So this is going to be, here's the goal of this, uh, each, we're obviously working together for several calls. Each month we work on a one-on-one -on -one meeting mm -hmm. and we've got a bunch of your stuff, your background here. What I want to work on in this meeting, this analysis meeting, is let's get to know your business, your needs, but mostly your customer. And I want to dive in, understand your current customers, find out exactly what networks and tech that they're using so that we know where to focus and to reach new customers. And then this will let us work on the next sessions together. So without um, spending too much time on background, I'd love to dive in and, and we'll get to know your business while we get to know your customer. Can you describe for us the Twitter for Actors business model first in 30 seconds or less and then we dive into the customer? Uh, sure. Um, I've worked in social media for a little while, moved to LA a year ago, networked and started meeting a ton of aspiring entertainers, uh, mm -hmm. most of which I found out were using Twitter or Facebook to brand themselves. Mm -hmm. and. Decided to write an ebook called Twitter for Actors that was very um, just easy to follow and help aspiring actors brand themselves, uh, starting with Twitter, and I hope to branch out to other platforms as well. Mm hmm. Great. So, talk to me about your customer. Let's get in detail about them. Um, I mean, obviously, for this specific book, it's it's actors, but really, you know, the principles in the book are the same principles that I use with any brands I work with and I also think that it's a good fit for anybody in the entertainment space. So let's be specific about is there any type of actor okay Josh they're the people that have lived here less than six months they really want to meet more people and do you have any specific one that's going real well? Um, I, I don't necessarily have a demographic data that, that, seg that is that segmented yet I mean I think that like as far as social media goes, regardless of where in the where in your career you are for acting, um, I think it's important. I guess when you're first starting out and you maybe not haven't necessarily uh, landed like a big gig, whether it's in a movie or you know on a television show, and maybe you're doing indie films or student films, and you're kind of just trying to build your brand and get your name out there. That's I'm speculating, but I think that that's probably the best best target. Yeah, yeah. So, and, and the goal of this video is really for us to hone in on your favorite customer, the customer that you feel is best responding to your service so that we can, uh, in future sessions, work together to come up with ideas on how to reach that person. Right on. So you're saying actors that are first starting out. Um, and, and I think, I mean, I think that that's probably a good target for, for the book itself, but I've certainly worked with and enjoy working with actors that, that already have a following, that yeah. have established themselves. Yeah. But I think it's probably, that would be a different product. Yeah, especially since if you can help somebody that's first starting out with limited resources, then you can definitely help somebody with more resources. But that means your formulas are good if you can help uh, first starting out. So tell me more about these people. Are, what, what's their their general age bracket of those that are coming to you? Are they in their 20s? Uh, yes, primarily 20s and yeah, I would say 20s is probably okay. exactly it. Because they get the tech and yep. uh, they want to work on it. Okay. Um, are They live in LA area mostly? Um, you know, actually I, I've kind of been uh, doing, you know, targeting the entire US. So okay. obviously when I'm marketing it in person, I'm in LA. I'm, talking to people in LA, but if I'm doing di digital marketing, I don't want to be pigeonholed into only LA. Okay. Great. Tell me more about the customer. Like, who, who's actually, you, you've obviously been selling it and we'll look in future videos of, about your landing page and everything, but right. give me an example of some of them that have stood out to you uh, that, that we could target more of. Uh, what do you mean, like customers? Yeah, people that have downloaded the e the chapter one or something, or opted in and then bought it, and you've heard from them, like they rave about it. Who sure. are those people? Um, well, they pretty much fit into that bracket of being in their twenties and being in LA. And usually, the way that I hear from them is on Twitter, uh, which Great. which makes sense. And you know, they'll just give me a shout out saying I read the book, I loved it, 
Some of them will leave a testimonial on Amazon. Uh, right. All of the testimonials on Amazon are spectacular, which is which is really uh, flattering for me. Great, great. Um, yeah, I mean, I guess that like I'm I'm very transparent in the book, and I say, hey, this is my email address. This is my you know uh, personal uh, not phone number, but you know contact information, Twitter, yep. whatever. You can get at me if you have any questions. Um, so yeah, I mean, on all different channels, certain people reach out to me, but I think that usually it's probably on Twitter or just leaving a thing on Amazon. Yeah, and and I hate to do this, but this let's dive in deeper into the customer, and and this will come out helping, I think, in the long run. Sure. I, I want to target just a little bit more. Hey, Josh, here's here's something that's working with this segment of the customer, because once we do that, I think we can hyper, we, we can get really. Uh, you can get even better with the whole group if we just focus on one. So let's do this. Um, are these people fully employed somewhere else and this is their side passion? Um, I would say yes. Okay. And and that's kind of the reason that I wrote the ebook is because I think that in the entertainment industry, obviously, it's very competitive. and. People can't afford to pay a high consulting rate for me to work on a one-on-one -on -one basis with everyone. Yeah. And so this ebook was a little bit lower price point where somebody that's whether they're waiting tables or finishing school or whatever, you know, can get essentially what I would give a client in like a four-hour consultation. They get it for like eight bucks in an ebook. Yeah, yeah. I love it. Okay, now now we're now we're getting into that. It's it's your entry level. They're fully right. employed somewhere. They want to learn more. Um, they definitely eventually want to be an actor, but they're doing this on the side. Right. And, and I want to, and I'd love to keep it that like low barrier to entry for price point, but I'm totally open to raising it because um, if I'm going to be doing digital marketing, I need to get uh, ROI. And with, you know, paying for the clicks that I've been paying for, it's, it's really tough when I'm only making, you know, five bucks a sale. Yeah. Oh, a hundred percent. Yeah, I agree with you. So you want to keep it low barrier to entry, which is great. Talk to me about what people want next. Uh, they read the book, and um, uh, what, what are they doing with this? Are they saying, hey, this helps them get somewhere? or? Um... Yeah, I mean, I, I think that like a, a lot of the book is like kind of just really like branding yourself and setting it up visually, and then it talks about best practices for like engagement and stuff, but... I'm not trying to turn actors into like full-time tweeters. Yeah. I'm just trying to get them to to make sure that when they give someone their business card and someone goes to their Twitter profile and checks it out, the branding is consistent, they look good and, you know, kind of establishes a certain level of like trust. I guess. Yeah. So they can develop, okay, customer so wants terms, to have consistent branding and so build I, trust. Right. So I think that the next step of what people have been asking for or uh you know, it would be taking Twitter for actors and expanding it to, you know, Pinterest or, you know, Instagram or the other social verticals. Yeah. And I think Facebook would be the next logical step, but I also think that that book would be so long. Yeah. Yeah. I feel for you there. So, okay. So let's, the actors that are typically first starting out, let's review this. They're in their twenties. Uh, you've been targeting the entire USA. Obviously the majority of those people live in LA or have moved to LA or thinking about because it's such a big, uh, industry here. You hear from them on Twitter. They're rating on an Amazon highly. That's great. Uh, typically the customer's fully employed somewhere else. They want to be an actor on the side. Um, tell me more about their frustrations. Is there anything that the, the customer is like, yeah, this is the most frustrating or this is what they hate, this is what they love. Let's talk about their frustrations first. Hmm. Um, are, they, are they frustrated I, with I how really busy uh, Twitter is? Like, Are they frustrated with where they start there? Yeah, I mean, I, I think that everyone's in a different space and a lot of people don't understand what it work, how it works. I think that a lot of it of the kind of stuff that I'm touching on in the book isn't necessarily like a pain point that they're aware of until I kind of explain why it is a problem for their Twitter. So for example, um, you know, I, I'm a big proponent on your, your username. As an actor, your name and your face is like your brand and your logo. Mm -hmm. So I think that if it's your hand, whether it's your Twitter handle or your Twitter profile picture, like that needs to match the headshot on your resume or that needs to match the name on your resume yep. which needs to match the name on your Facebook like it's all it's it's got to get those pieces mm -hmm. and I don't people don't come to me saying 
I don't understand why people aren't, you know, aren't recognizing me. Mm -hmm. But I think that when I lay it out in the book saying, look, you know, if, you know, you have a conversation that starts here and you move it to Twitter, everything needs to kind of look mm -hmm. on brand and on point. And then they realize, oh, okay, that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Ironically, for Twitter for Actors um, Twitter handle, I couldn't get at Twitter for Actors uh, because you can't put Twitter in your Twitter handle. Yeah, yeah. So that's like the one thing I'd switch up, but and I address that in the book. But yeah, but it, but it makes sense. I, I saw your, uh, I saw it, it. It does make sense. It's kind of cool. We, I went up to there t, tfa dot com Twitter for Actors dot com. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's not bad. It's it's cool. Um, okay. Yeah. Cool. So I like that. The customer doesn't know about the pain point until they read the book. They, their pain point really is uh, branding. What, why is the conversation dropping in a way? They see my resume. Right. They see my v thing, and then they're not. Right. Nobody's tweeting with me. Am I right? Yeah. Why? Why isn't my phone ringing? Customers' pain point is uh, why isn't my phone ringing? Why? don't we continue why don't I have more conversations from those that have my resume yeah okay cool awesome and they don't understand that the conversation needs to continue uh, online under the same username yeah same under the name same brand, you know same branding branding yep Yep, so true. Awesome. Okay, so I feel pretty good about that. Hey, yeah. let, let me ask you this: what other what other classes are is the customer in? Are they taking an acting class? Um, a lot of them are, and actually, I think that that's a um, a great space because those people are willing to invest in their career. Great. So they're willing to put some money down and spend right. on this. Okay, right. that's that's cool. They're proactive. Yes. About getting somewhere. Right. And I've reached out to some acting coaches that teach classes that are uh, express interest in doing partnerships. I love which it. Could, uh, which could be, I'm sure, a conversation later down the road. But yeah, I think it's a part of a partnership thing. That's really great. Okay, so talk to me. Um, that this is for some businesses who's the decision maker for some of our movie theater companies typically sure. it's the mom and it sounds like the decision maker is the actor am i right yeah absolutely the individual making making the purchase yeah making a purchase for their future yeah and, for the, and buying it for themselves in rare cases people have bought it you know as a gift for someone else but uh that's only happened just a few times. But to lead Jen, you want to get into the pocketbook of the person that's then going to open up their pocketbook even more for a hundred dollar purchase or a thousand dollar purchase or something like that. So, they're yeah. So I, I think this is right. And then every yeah. once in a while, a friend, a, yeah. a boyfriend yeah, buys yeah, it yeah. for a girlfriend or something. But yeah, now exactly. what's what's this? This is tough. But but I was on the phone with a movie theater the other day, and he said, "This is our why." And I thought, "Wow, it's so great." There's books about it. What's your why? So. Tell me, do you, and we can do this at the end, we can come back to it, Blake, but but what's your why? What, what, and and um, I can explain that if you want. Um, he, my, my why for Twitter for Actors? Yeah. Um, I mean, the way I interpret that uh, question is kind of like my motivation behind it. Um, and it's just to... Uh, reach and help as many people as possible and make it scalable because uh, doing it one-on-one -on -one sometimes isn't. So I love that. You're so right. And here's here's what we've found on the why. Some of the best companies will explain. Uh, when I ran for politics, I had a why. And my why was, hey, I went and met with... It's kind of the story that's forward-facing. So, hey, I met with a couple of the city council people. I met with the police officer, the fire department, and I went, wow, I think I know business better than most of the people sitting uh, in politics in this local community, and I'm nicer, I think, or some of the people would rather vote for me. I bet I could um, I bet I bet could do a better job or as good of a job and, and have a lot more fun than a lot of those guys up there. Let's be more customer-friendly, business-friendly, and voter-friendly. 
And that was my why. People loved that story. So when you started this company, I, I think it gets back to you saw a lot of people frustrated and you couldn't, uh, they couldn't afford to spend four hours with you. Right. Uh, is that kind of what it is? Like the, the why 100%. people should buy this because they get all of your data without having to invest a ton of money? Yes, exactly. Get all the data from a four hour consultation in a, a, a ten dollar ebook, let's just say. Sure. Okay. We're getting okay, cool. Now tell us about your business. What's what's working right now? Where are you and what I mean is for leads, you're getting a lot of downloads after you speak or um what what's what's clicking that um I did a I did a webinar uh, with Amy Jo Neal, who is like an acting uh, coach and kind of outspoken social media in the acting space. Mm -hmm. um, and that drove a lot of uh, great traffic. Um, and in, in part of her webinar, I actually let her give away part of the book. And mm -hmm. I jumped on the call for a little bit, and we randomly selected one person where you know I went in and made them a custom Twitter background. So that was probably it, the one single thing that drove the most eyeballs. Um, you know, I kind of touched on before, but I've done you know some digital marketing where I've done some Facebook ads, mm -hmm. uh, sidebar newsfeed ads. I get clicks and eyeballs. Uh, they weren't the conversion rate wasn't high enough to make me enough money to make it worth me optimizing the ads. I yeah. wasn't losing money. I wasn't making money. I was just spending my time, and I wasn't really. I don't think collecting. A, the lead gen is really where where I think the biggest gap is. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so webinars were free and they're kind of fun. Um, yeah, that was. I mean, that was like a one-off thing that Amy invited me to do because she was already doing a course called like the Actor Factor, and so for one of like the modules, she had me jump on a Google Hangout and talk about Twitter. Great, that's rad. Hey. Uh, how you're you're doing a little bit of guest speaking here and there on this which is cool is that working yeah i think it, honestly like like as you know um i know listeners won't or whatever but you know me doing my social media and kind of pr stuff is is beyond just twitter for actors so yeah. most of my speaking type of stuff or that type of uh i guess outward facing promo for myself isn't really targeting Twitter for actors, but it's also not talking to actors. Yeah. So it is driving, you know, traffic to my own personal brand and, and, and the company that I'm working with, the PR firm I work with. I haven't really, uh, like, I, I would love to go and do, like, a guest lecture at, like, a college in an acting class mm -hmm. or something like that. I think that'd be perfect, and it would pair guest speaking and Twitter for actors. Mm -hmm. Right now, anything speaking-wise that I'm doing is, is more, like, Facebook for small business mm -hmm. or, you know, Facebook for apps, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Great. Any uh, any other things that are working for this that are getting lead gen? Like, like, For instance, Josh, I did this one thing and surprisingly I got 10 downloads or something or whatever. No, I mean, really the only thing was that webinar with Amy and and honestly because this I wrote this book now, uh, shoot, about a year ago and um, I've kind of let it just sit. And you know it, it does all right. It moves copies on Amazon, I guess, just because there's not really products like it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, I'm I'm really not doing a lot of uh, outbound efforts to like draw eyeballs. But I, but that's why I was so excited about kind of this this course and, and call with you is because you know I've got that that's already built and that's yeah. done. So yeah. Now I need to you know just start moving more copies. Exactly. Exactly, and getting more people, it sounds like, land on that site to, to learn more about it. Um, I anything else that's working that, that uh, you got a few downloads on? You got a webinar, it, uh, are you handing out cards and people are landing on it? Are you collecting cards and you follow up with an email to them? Um, when I went to Sundance, I, I printed cards specifically for Twitter for Actors, okay. uh, and I passed those out. It was just a short run of cards. I also collected a ton of cards. Um, when I'm not networking, I'm I'm really pretty good at email follow up. Yeah, um, love it. So I definitely you know sent everyone a saying a thank you email, 
I'll always, you know, write a little personal note on their business card so I can kind of reference like a talking point that that will resonate with them. And then say, you know, like I told you, you know, Twitter for Actors is, you know, one of my projects. Check out the site here. Yep. Um, And that was good. I mean, and obviously at a place like Sundance, that makes sense. And honestly, there's probably plenty of places in L.A. that make sense. But, you know, kind of like in the speaking engagements, when I'm going out now in L.A., I'm handing out my, you know, business card that's more targeting clients on the business end, not the actors. Mm -hmm. So I love that. And by the way, my favorite thing that you said today is you follow up with people better than they follow up with you. And it's so true. I'm I'm such a big believer in collecting cards more than I hand them out. So that's great. Um, What's the most profitable service? And I know we've been talking about the ebook being less than 10 bucks. There's maybe a free download or something. And then tell me about that's not the end goal, I'm guessing. As a fellow author, I know that the end goal isn't me selling books. Do you want to consult with more people? Like, What's your most profitable service that we should know about on this call? I mean, yeah, certainly the most profitable service that I have is doing social media strategy on Retainer. So... And, and that hasn't been something that's really been for actors because that takes somebody mm-hmm. that's not just trying to make it. Um, you yeah. know, that would be somebody that's very established and has a budget to to afford that. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, that's the most profitable service I offer. The most profitable service I would offer to the same demographic and age group that we kind of drew out there. Yep. Honestly, I'm, I'm not exactly sure what that is yet. Okay. Well, we can... Well, uh, We'll come up with some ideas as we go through this. This will be exciting. Um, we don't. So right now, the book is really what you have to offer them. We need, kind of yep. need to roll out that future so we have a plan of phase one, two, and three yeah. for them. Exactly. Um, don't currently have a, uh, a follow-up products. Right. Follow-up services to offer readers. And that'll be fun. Uh, it's actually really exciting because you already have phase one done. It's working. We just need to start uh, giving people more information. So we kind of talked about this. How do you generate new prospects, webinars, uh, events, follow-up emails, anything else? Um, I mean, you know, it was Facebook ads for a little while. Okay. But I haven't done those uh, for that that long. I mean, I guess I wouldn't be opposed to Twitter ads, seeing that they're already on Twitter. Um, In my past experience that's been a pretty high cost yeah it's it's you expensive know. that's that's so, what the big boys play you and i exactly. are scrappy it's, it's some enterprise stuff yeah you and i are scrappy and, and usually spending money um yeah but i, yeah, I do I've actually I've, I've i've got some cool stuff coming up and and i noticed up top you wrote a question mark for instagram and, and i don't even think i have an instagram for twitter for actors mm-hmm. um but i've actually got some instagram stuff that's going to be rolling out soon that'll it's going to be more for brands, but I think there might be some uh, some synergy there as well. I love it. I think it's great. Now, what do oh, you... and Vine, by the way. Yeah, Vine's great, I think, isn't I it? I think Vine for actors would be fantastic. Yeah, yeah, that would be cool. There's so much to talk about there, and, and so it's such a diversion we could get on. I think it'd be great. Um, yeah. What would you like to do more of to generate more leads? Um, I would... I mean, I want to uh, email capture, basically, and, yeah. and, and really funnel people through that. And and honestly, on TwitterForActors.com right now, the email form that gets you 10 pages kicks back an error, and it has only for about a week. But it's because okay. I canceled my AWeber account, uh, and I'm switching over to MailChimp, and I haven't haven't done the back end yeah. end yeah. of that. Um, and I was basically, I was paying for AWeber and I was getting some email addresses, but I didn't, because I didn't really have an email drip or a follow-up product, like it yeah. didn't mean anything. Mm-hmm. So, Great. yeah, I mean, I would love to have a, a good email funnel. That's really exciting here, because that's more than, I think email is the most powerful social network that we all check. So that's cool. So email capture, um, would you be open to doing more webinars or partnerships? 100%. Yeah, it doesn't take you much time, right? Not at all. More webinars and um, and partnerships. Great. Uh, how about speaking? What does that generate some leads? Yes, and and it's something I'm interested in on on both, you know, the 
actor client side yeah. and then also the business client side so definitely speaking stuff yeah actor for actors that's that's great and, I, and like guest posting yeah guest blogging. yeah there you go guest blogging for other places right which is actually something i've done not for twitter for actors but for other stuff that's driven a lot of good traffic yeah okay that's great i, I think that's a that's a really good one too all right, we're gonna go through this. We're gonna wrap this up here in a sec. I want to do sure. something really fun. That's a four-step thing that's in my book. A lot of people say, "What's your social media strategy?" and and they they throw out a few buzzwords. And you know me, I I I don't like buzzwords as much, so I try and change the formula a little. I'm gonna ask you, what is your goal on social media for Twitter for Actors? And then I'm gonna ask you, why, why, why? And we're gonna get we're gonna go through this exercise just to get down to the bottom and have one point that we will always remember on social media. So what is your goal on social media for Twitter for actors? Um, drive people to the sales funnel. Okay. I love it. Why? Um, because I want to sell the book. Love it. Okay. Why? Because once I sell the book, I believe that I can, I have the faith in the content that I can sell them something else. Mm hmm Okay, why? Because I believe that I'm good at what I do and know more than they, they do in this space. Okay. I love it. Okay, I think you're, because you're sophisticated in this, you hit it. You hit it really early on. You want to get people to sales funnel. A lot of people say, I want to build buzz around my company. I want to get the word out, right? You're very sophisticated. Because I want to sell the book, you pretty much hit it right on the why, the first why. Mm -hmm. Second, I think, is really good because you can sell them something else. I think that's a downstream, which is really great. And then part of your the way in which you sell them something else is because you're helping them with this. So I think the two things we highlight here is mm -hmm. everything in social media is how do we get them to sell, we sell the book. And to do that is we have to help them uh, hey, you're a leading learner in this space, so we want to give them away some information, and we're going to do that to sell the book, which leads them into, we want them to be a lifetime customer. Right. Lots of information, consulting, all kinds of stuff. We're going to work on that together, which I'm really stoked about. That leads into a custom website module, which we'll look at on the next call. But I'm really excited cool. about this. We, we, I know this is probably boring. You're like, Josh, we're going into no, dude, customer. No, this is amazing. No, this is perfect. Now, now we have a foundation where we can look at people and go, ah, you are or you are not. And then everybody else peripherally, we can throw them into something else that's profitable too for you. Sure. Great. Any more questions before we wrap up the, up the video? No, man. Honestly, uh, this has been awesome. And, you know, Twitter for Actors started as a side project on a couple weekends because I was just frustrated with actors not getting it on Twitter mm -hmm. and I never really when I wrote the book and just kind of threw it out to see what sticks I like never got to sit down and kind of do this type of thing um, and really like dive into like what the customer wants or what I'm the longer term strategy and I've always had like all the kind of pieces circling in my head but to get it all in like one document's awesome so really uh, appreciate it hey thank you thank you so much glad you're on this